And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, the master of a thousand eras, and the ma and the man come and the man bringing back the era zone with a with a handful of prototype era games as part of Zine Quest this year, the one and only the Shade of Vengeance himself, Ed Jowett. How you doing today, man? Or I'm doing fantastic. Uh, just apologies to listeners. I've got a bit of a cold. So if you hear me choking, I'm fine. But uh, yeah, no, I'm ready for the ready for the batshit crazy today. Yeah, and if it, if if anybody asks that if anybody asks that you sound like you're choking, I'll just I'll just say, well he well he's cosplaying as a Man United fan. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I could hey I could have gone I could have gone worse I could have gone I could have gone with the could have gone with the wolves or something. Uh, besides, if I besides if I made an Atlanta joke, uh, you wouldn't get it. Uh, unfortunately, not. No. <laughs> uh, every sport, every sport has its whipping boy, and I like making fun of all of them. Uh, I I think that's completely valid. Mm -hmm. But so as I so. As I understand, as I understand it, this is for starters your your um and your entry for Zine Quest, which is make which is currently making the rounds all over the place. Um, That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just um for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Zine Quest is um, it's a Kickstarter initiative. So, uh, it's normally in February, I should say, and for some reason. It's in August this year. I, I heard some rumours it was because they wanted it to coincide with Gen Con. Um, but they're also putting it back to February next year. So it sort of more makes me wonder if they just sort of had too much stuff going on in February and couldn't couldn't do it or something. But, you know, I've only heard rumours. I've not heard anything from Kickstarter itself about why August this year and why February next year. Um... But yeah, the idea behind Zine Quest is uh, it, it's really a shot in the arm for those tabletop role-playing game projects, which are about, you know, delivering something that's maybe a bit more rough and ready, that reminds people of the zines from, you know, the 80s, uh, where, you know, role-playing games were kind of at their height and people were just producing content. Actually, I think... I think I'd say role-playing games are more at their height now, in my opinion, than they were in the 80s. But that's my opinion. Um, and, and people were just able to produce content uh, at a very rapid rate, uh, which was great content, but maybe not delivered as, you know, glossy pages with full colour. It was, here's some great content, and, and it's sort of wrapped up in a, in a relatively small package. Yeah. Basically. I can say that, even though I, was, even though I wasn't born in... I was born in '87, but um, there are cer there are certain there are certain trends in RPGs in the '80s that I'd rather st I'd rather stay in that era. Um, one of them be one of them being the massive massive boner for um, ch for chart hell, and I'm yeah. specifically looking at people like Fantasy Games Unlimited. They've been my whipping boy for years, and well, the biggest whipping boy in that regard will. Is and always will be Palladium. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Palladium are are very or were back then very much uh, in that direction. I mean, there there are very few games that were around in the eighties that weren't guilty of that to one degree or another. Uh, Traveler, to some degree, mm -hmm. is quite guilty of the chart hell, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. So you know, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I... I'm, I'm pleased to say that we've moved on, for the most part, from chart hell. Um, you know, we we we've learned that lesson yep. uh, as an industry, I think. Yeah, and I'm, all, I'm all, I also don't miss um, books without indexes. I've told you about this before, but anytime, anytime some book comes out that doesn't have an index, that's grounds for a public flogging. Uh, yeah, I I uh, I have to say the Arizona does not come with an index. It comes with contents, like a contents list, 
but well, but not actually an index to look stuff up. Well, um, I give a, I give a pass to smaller books. Right. Yeah. No. But but, but you know, you're three hundred pages where you're like, come on, I know there was something in here about how to shoot a weapon at someone mm-hmm. when you're in the dark, and you're like, I can't find it. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes, I understand. And of course, and of course, the I'd say I'd say some I'd say um the fi- the final thing that I don't miss is is certain rule sets being poorly explained. Um. This I often I often joke that th- that Thaco in Dungeons and Dragons is a okay idea that was explained poorly. Yeah, I I understand what you're I understand what you're what you're saying there. Yeah, I mean, again, I I, I think the industry, you know, I I, I would argue that the industry is doing better than it ever has mm-hmm. um, now, pretty much. Yeah. Um, in a sense, COVID was a massive boost for the industry because suddenly people were were you know hopping on some kind of video conferencing to play because there wasn't a lot else to do. So, you know, that that was, you know, that was kind of people were coming back to role playing games, people were looking at them again. Mm-hmm. And um I think I think we've learned as well as an industry that explaining rules badly just hurts everybody in the long run. Yeah. Um it you know, it means that people have to make up their own rules around the things that don't make sense or they can't understand or they can't find due to lack of index. And then you have to build on top of that and then you release a new book and people people are like well i can't use that content because this rule like means that i have to rewrite the entire content so no i'm not i'm not going to buy that you know new class book or whatever so yeah now again i think it's just poorly explained rules perhaps were weren't deliberate but i i i think we've got a lot better as an industry at describing rules and describing when they should be used as well mm-hmm. since the 1980s. Yeah. Now, with the now with that in mind, since there's a handful of pro- of prototypes within um within the within this project, I'd like to I'd like to de- I'd like to delve into a bit into a bit of them, and the first one that the first one that I want to cover. Is is Dragon Song, which is in the high fantasy realm. This is not your first technical rodeo, but I think I think the last time you did fantasy was what Liars, Silence, Silence, Air was, Silence. Yeah, I both of those both of those were out by the time I found out about you, so I didn't have the um, timeline. Uh, yeah, no, Air of Silence was was a short while after after Air of Liars. But yes, fantasy is not something that I delve into super often. Um, now, ironically, Era Dragon Song was the second game I ever wrote. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it was. Well, I say wrote. That's probably, probably overstating it slightly. It's the second game of of Era D10 that I ever ran. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ran my my sci-fi Era the Consortium stuff. That was the first game I I, I wrote and created. And while I was writing the rulebook. Uh, a process which took about two years. I was running, uh, you know, sort of a generic fantasy world um, on the rules that I made up uh, for a bunch of colleagues at work um, mm. back at the time. And uh, and you know that that I was referring to as era high fantasy back then. Um, but it's the same rule set that I'm using now uh, for era dragon song. Mm-hmm. Since since it was an early incarnation of of era at the time, were there were there any things that were it that were in that early version of what you called era high fantasy that can, that kind of got phased out? Not really. Um, I'd more or less figured out what the rule set was going to look like by the time I started running it. So you know, it was what are the fantasy elements to the rule set? Mm-hmm. Um. I'd already decided there were 18 skills and, and what the attributes were and so on. And it was then, you know, oh, uh, what's the equipment like? Well, I, I, I wrote up a, a general sort of fantasy uh, selection of items, I guess, 
m many of them ended up getting used for era liars as well. Um, I, uh, I I wrote up some spells and I I thought about how I wanted to do magic for high fantasy, um, and it, it more adapted the other way because uh, I was quite happy with the rule set. It ran very well and we ran for about I don't know eighteen weeks or something. Mm -hmm. Um. And um, basically, the the world adapted as, as I sort of moved towards era dragon song rather than era high fantasy. The world is what adapted to the rules rather than the rules adapting to the world so much. I, I had that malleability because no one really knew anything about the world, and obviously, uh, fantasy is a really really tricky genre because no one quite wants you to just replicate D and D. They want something a bit different. I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, yeah, so Era Dragon Song, you know, the, the world sort of became malleable from that sort of basic, okay, I know what D&D &D tastes like. Um, I'm going to modify it and make it more my own based on the rules and the way I've built them and the way the rules seem to push you as a character. Lean. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I did. I, 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 let the, I let the world modify and, and, and mutate, as it were. And given what you mentioned earlier about pe about people not just want just wanting D and D in a different coat of paint, but wanting something different, um, that touches on something that I've pre I've preached about for y for years, which is Pete, which is um the issues with how people view fantasy. It's yeah, very a very limiting approach. Um. Think, thinking that Tolkien is the is the way that you have to do things in order for it to be fantasy, which don't get me wrong, I love I love I love me some Middle Earth, but I don't want it to be the be all end all of fantasy. And yeah, I've told I've told the story in the past how um, I would go on forums and people would say that Planescape was too weird to be considered fantasy, um, which. Is hilarious to me because I, because I can only imagine how they'd handle Talus Lanta or something like that. Yeah, no, I, I that 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 was making me smile as well. I mean, um, a, an interesting an interesting thing for me uh, in that area is actually World of Warcraft because although on the surface of it, it's quite it's quite Tolkien esque, especially like the original vanilla was quite Tolkien esque. The more that they were allowed to do their own thing, you know, and, and obviously when I say World of Warcraft, I'm obviously also referring to the Warcraft franchise in general, mm -hmm. uh, which I heard, and I, I never really substantiated this, but I, I heard that it was originally a Lord of the Rings game that they then lost the license for before it was completed. So they not, just completed it anyway. Um, not not exactly. If there's any if there's any franchise that World of Warcraft that um, Warcraft as a whole owes its a lot of its origin story to. Oddly enough, it's Warhammer. Uh, um, Warhammer sorry. Fantasy to the point to the point where Games Workshop pulled a Games Workshop and got Sue happy with them. They lost. Mm. But if you look, but if you look at the if you look at the RTS days with um, Warcraft, there is a lot of that DNA. Yeah, I mean, uh, but but what what. I bleh. what I mean is when I came across the Warcraft universe, I, I, I was quite a late comer to the universe. I, I learned it through World of Warcraft. I played vanilla. Mm -hmm. And then Burning Crusade comes along. And you're like, okay. That's kind of weird. There's a spaceship here now. Mm -hmm. And we're going through this massive portal to go to another world where, yeah, this spaceship is actually there. Okay, that's a bit odd. And then... As the world grew further, it grew further and further away. You know, as as I experienced the world, it grew further and further away from that sort of Tolkien esque basics. This is what it's like, and more and more into something different. Hmm. And I, you know, it never quite got as far as the examples you mentioned earlier, but um, it, it definitely began to move away from. Here is here is orcs and humans and trolls and they fight and you know it moved away from that. 
um, which I, I, I thought was, you know, quite quite an interesting journey to follow as someone new to the universe. Mm-hmm. And with that in mind, what's I know fantasy is fantasy is something that has a wide net. What style of fantasy is Dragon Song going for? Especially since you always like to put your own little tweaks into the into an expected genre. So it's it's a high magic fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it all all of all of the characters basically have access to magic if they want it. Um, you know, you 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 would have to put a lot of points into magic in order to you know have lots of magic. But you know the 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 concept of the game is you know the almost the the mundane like in Harry Potter is completely you know, acceptable from a magical standpoint. So, brooms operating on their own and and cleaning the room and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. All the way up to throwing fireballs, because that really does have to be a thing, let's be honest. Um, Blood magic that, you know, extracts health from yourself or from an enemy, if you're lucky. Um, and, And then sort of uses that to power itself up. Or, you know, light magic, which uh, uh, sort of deals... I'd almost call it holy damage. Um, you know, healing magic, um, nature sort of magic, like, um, uh, you know, uh, encasing vines and that sort of thing. You know, there, there are many familiar sorts of spells that you can find in Era Dragon Song. But what you'll find is that magic is everywhere. Everyone uses it. Everyone has it. And while it might not be your first go-to, you know, you're perfectly happy to run in with an axe or whatever, everyone has the opportunity to access it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I created eight races to play as, eight schools of magic. Um, this is not a coincidence. Uh, the number eight is something that repeats throughout uh, Era Dragon Song. It, it relates to the... The, the, the sort of the core of the universe, uh, which probably won't come up very much in the prototype, um, but it relates to an eight-headed Hydra, mm-hmm. um, which is said to have been battled by the first hero, Gilgamesh, at the beginning of the world. Um, so, you know, Gilgamesh defeated this Hydra, uh, removed its heads, and each fell into a pool of water, four of them in the light and four of them in the shade. And from that, the eight races came about. Uh, don't get me wrong; the ones that are uh, the ones that are dark races are not evil. They just prefer places with less light. Uh, like no race is evil or good. Um, it's it's sort of like uh, if you imagine. I'm just trying to think. Uh, okay, imagine a world where where lizard folk can wander around, you know, normal cities and no one would bat an eyelid, right? Like a D and D esque world, but where that happens. Yeah. Um and and they get sort of drow po- uh drow like penalties for being in the light. Mm-hmm. For being on the surface during daytime. That's what a dark race would experience. So, you know, if you're if you're adjusted to the darkness, then you you're much better off underground. If you're adjusted to the light, you're carrying torches underground and, and, and trying to see in the dark. Mm-hmm. Um and and again, anyone within any race can be good or evil. It's not, it's not a racial thing. Um, the the eight schools of magic, uh, four of them are arcane and four of them are divine. Mm-hmm. Um, again, there is no particular uh, link between races and the type of magic that they can use. So um, we we've got some unusual races. We've got some we've got locust kin, mm-hmm. which are just basically giant locusts. Um, sort of eight foot tall locusts. In fact, the uh, the sample character I've got is a super friendly giant locust. Um, he's really excited to be an adventurer. He always wanted to be an adventurer, and now he's an adventurer. And oh my god, it's the first time I've ever seen a demonic cave underground. That's fantastic. It's brilliant. Let's go and look at it. Mm. You know, <laughs> he's he's sort of that. You know, so you you get sort of the full spectrum of of characters that you want to have. And um, there, are, you know, there are plenty of mysteries in the world as well. There are acropolises that float above the the surface of the world. No one, even those who can fly, have never been able to reach them. 
uh, they're surrounded by some kind of magical barrier. But occasionally they fall from the sky as if they've run out of power or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they'll fall from the sky, and, and those are what form the dungeons for dungeon crawls, basically. Um, so, you know, these, these things that used to be up in the sky... Um, they fall, and then you know you can enter, and you can you can find out what's within, and they're as varied as as you know different cities. Mm-hmm. Now, with the it's it's good that you mentioned um, four arcane and four divine because when you mentioned eight, um, per eight essentially essentially schools of magic, what immediately ended up coming to mind coming to mind is the is the eight that that i think everybody's familiar with in, in Look, the the has. yeah but magic i i've always i've always held the feeling that magic much like high technology in an sf work because you can potentially do anything with it there needs to be rules um oh yeah and absolutely obviously guys like sanderson have <laughs> Have made a full have made a full career with having their magic systems have very have very defined rules, and Robert Jordan has done has done a very good job with his magic system in Wheel of Time. In that mm. same regard, I'd like to explore a bit explore a bit of the rules when it comes to how, when it comes to how magic works and what you and what you can, and um what you need in order to make in order to make it work. Yeah. So. Uh, in Era Dragon Song, there is uh, a skill called magic. Okay, um, it sits along with the other technical skills in the game, um, and what you have is basically eight vertical lines of spells. Mm-hmm. Uh, four of them are divine, and four of them are arcane. So the first choice you have to make is: Are you an arcane magic user or a divine magic user? You can't be both. Mm-hmm. You've got to choose one or the other. That only restricts you to four schools, so it's not not a massive restriction. Um, so there's there's blood magic, elemental magic, enchantment magic, necromancy uh, in the arcane, mm-hmm. and then there's holy, nature, light, and mind magic in the divine. Um, and um, depending on which you choose, you then have. Uh, five spells in each school of magic uh, progressively stronger and what you're able to do is for each point you have in your magic skill you're able to build downwards uh, in as many trees as you like Mm -hmm. however you only get the same number of spells as you have points in magic so you only have enough to max out one tree even if you're at full magic and then three in in other trees. Mm-hmm. So you've got to make some fairly harsh choices because you know I'm talking about eight by five. That's forty different things, and you only get eight points. And and okay, you can only choose from twenty once you've made your first choice. But it, it means that you're making some fairly fairly harsh choices because you know all of the top level spells are fantastic. You know, like it's not like, oh yeah, well that's easy. I'll just go for blood magic. Yeah, I mean blood magic's fantastic, but then an AOE ten storm that inflicts an elemental effect on the area within it, and it stays there for three combat turns, is also brilliant. But you can't have both the top spell in blood and the top spell in elemental because it's not possible. You can't have that many points. Mm-hmm. So it forces you to make choices. It forces you to figure out how you want to build, how you want to play, and and what limitations you're willing to accept. You know, being able to raise an army of the dead is the top uh, necromancy skill. You can literally raise an army of successes zombies. Do so you get to roll? You know, say stamina and magic. That could be that could be as many as sixteen dice. Uh, you could be rolling on a say a five or six threshold on some occasions. You might be raising eight to. 8 to 10 to 12 zombies mm-hmm. on a decent roll it's pretty damn good you know you 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 you're just having those then go and attack an enemy not only that you can blow any of them up at any time because you can actually explode corpse 
Mm. Oh, Explode Undead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you can just have them run in and all explode in front of someone if you want to. Mm-hmm. But that means you have to have spent five points in necromancy. So which one of those are you going to choose? How are you going to build your character? How is your character going to learn magic and focus on it? Yeah, and to the to that to that end, usually in a lot of games with that have a magic system, there's always some sort some sort of control, whether it, whether it be a resource you have to draw from or a or the fact that you have to roll for it, which the latter of which I think I think is an I think is a matter of course, but what would you what would you say is the control the control factor? Well, you have to roll for it, mm-hmm. as you say. Um, blood magic is the only one which draws on a resource. It draws on health, mm-hmm. and your damage is multiplied by the amount of health you sacrifice. So it is very mu- it is very much high risk, high reward compared to the oh, other, yeah. to the other spell trees. Although although it is also possible to set up as part of the blood magic tree an unwilling sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So you can get someone else if you can beat them with a willpower check. You 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 get to uh, you you get to actually link to them and use their health instead of yours. Yeah. But you've got to beat them with a willpower check. So, yeah. Now, era is. Is fairly is fairly free form. Yeah. So one thing, and given given that you mentioned that everybody has the potential to pursue magic, I'm guessing that you that um someone wanting to do someone wanting to do some sort of gish is is very easy in this system. Some sort of what? Sorry. Gish. Um, if you're not aware, if you're not aware, gish is. Is a ter- is a term for those who do- for those who do fighting and magic. Oh um, yeah, no, absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah, no, um, very much, very much a possibility. Um, nearly everyone will be a combination of some physical fighting and some magic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite rare for anyone to really restrict their character to not have physical abilities as well. Yeah, and something. Uh- Something else I was cu- I was curious about is how m- races are something that you that you ra- that you rarely dabble in when it comes to when it, when it came to the, when it came to the more fantasy approaches. Obviously, you did it with the consortium, but how much uh, of with, f- with lies with silence? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how much of a factor, or rather, how, or rather. Is the contribution to to um to a ca- to character creation this um when it comes to your choice of race going to be the same as it has been the previous times you've had races or cl- or um clans in the case in the ca- in the case of um uh chosen chosen um <clears throat> somewhat um it's it's at the moment the races don't make a lot of difference. Um, some have uh, so the locust kin whose character sheet I'm I'm looking at right now has natural armor, mm-hmm. um, uh, but is not able to wear armor. So you know that's the trade off, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the Draki, the lizard folk from uh, uh, from Era Dragon Song, um, they're all dying of a plague. Uh, that doesn't actually affect their stats in any way. Um, but it, it's it's a big motivator for you know lizard men who are adventurers. They're probably out looking for a cure. Mm-hmm. So you know it it whether a light race or a dark race does affect things, as I mentioned earlier, of course. Um, it's it's likely to influence what your character is like. Um, but right now it does not have any statistical modifiers for any of the main attributes or skills. Yeah, and incidentally, when you mentioned the when you mentioned the whole thing of dark races not getting along with light, um, oh no no no, sorry, they do, they they can get along fine with light. They just no, oh, sorry, well, dark I mean, races not getting along with 
I mean light, light sources. I, I see what you mean. Yes. Yes. Um, Sorry. Bye bye. I think I think a, I think a, would it be fair of me to make the analogy to why um, say Riddick has to has to wear those welders goggles yes. all the time? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot like that. Yeah. Just because just because his eyes are far more light sensitive than they're, they're completely adapted to 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 darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. And take and taking that taking that into account taking that into account usually usually there's some there's some interesting equipment within a, within a lot of your um, games and I'm guessing that tradition is going to continue. I'd like to think so. Mm -hmm. I've 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 got some good ideas. Um, I don't know how much of it's going to come out in the prototype. It's probably going to be a fairly basic. Uh, fairly basic set, but you know, Era Dragon Song is intended to be another 300-page core rulebook uh, within within the Era system. So uh, you know, we want to get it right. We've wanted to get it right for a good long time. Uh, I think 10 years is probably long enough to wait. We 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 are we are working on it at the moment. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that can be done. Uh, and and we've already had a lot of really fun adventures, you know. Uh, um, our locust kin uh, being so enthusiastic to find out what's down a bottomless well that the orc grabs him by the ankles and dangles him down there, and he's sort of yelling, "Oh, this is brilliant!" and and sort of throwing a fireball down the well to find out what's down there, you know. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's 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 one of those sort of. There's a lot of stuff. That, that I have in my head about how the world looks and feels, and that's all done. It's now about getting it into, you know, a form in which people can read it and understand it. It's it's like we were saying about uh, at the beginning about uh, expressing, well, not just the rules, but also the world mm -hmm. in a way that people can understand. That's that's the work that's left on Era Dragon Song. And I think that most people can, you know, understand most of it from, uh, you know, from a couple of pages which is really the whole point of the era zone and and the era zone issue that that the dragon song is going to bring with it is exactly all about that it's it's going to give you know a couple of pages to get you used to what it looks like it's going to give you the rules that you need on top of the era d10 fundamentals and then it's going to say you know what now you're good go play mm -hmm. yeah and Moving past that, I'd like I'd like to cover some of the other ones that you that yeah. are that are potentially on the on the list. Um, the first one being Era the Empowered Light, and what I'm most now obviously the Empowered is some is something that we that we've dipped into in in talking about with some with some of the previous times I've had you on, but yep, what I'm the one thing that I'm curious about the most mm -hmm. is the light part of part of that, and what ch what changes with a light variant of um, Era D10. So Era D10, um, it's it's a medium crunch system. It's mm -hmm. designed to be, it's intended to be, and I want it to be. Also, I have a very young son, um, too young to play yet. Um. But I don't think that, you know, when, when he's four or five years old and is ready to play, I don't think that the current era D10 rule set is necessarily the right thing to start on. Um, I think that there are some people out there who don't like the level of complexity that's involved uh, in era D10. I, I know this because, you know, I've had feedback. Now, generally, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to mislead anyone who's a fan of the system. Um, I I love the system the way it is. I'm very very happy with it. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that can be done, and Era D10 Light is designed to deliver something that would let you start quicker, uh, play more easily, build a character much more quickly. Um, it's intended to. Uh, you know, have simplified gameplay. It's intended to uh, allow people to, 
look immediately at a, at a character sheet and know in a glance everything that they can do rather than needing to sort of look over a sheet that is a bit more complicated and needs a bit of reading and understanding about what these things mean. Mm-hmm. Um, Era D10 Lite would be something that varies slightly by game. Um, much like Era D10 main, core, whatever I'm going to call Era D10. Mm-hmm. Um, but Era D10 Lite is uh, for Era the Empowered, for example, would have five stats. Only five. And then you choose either a double of one of those stats or or combine them um, in order to do what it is you want to do. Mm-hmm. So there is uh, and 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 it's the stats are based on on what we have on the character sheet already. So there is potence, uh, which is strength, intelligence, charisma. You know the 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 power, the physical and and mental and social power of your character. Mm. There is defense. Uh, which is, you know, your 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 ability to keep going. You know, your your physical stamina, your willpower. Mm-hmm. Um, there is reaction, which is, uh, you know, your your physical, mental reaction time. Um, there is luck, uh, because I think luck as a stat is actually really important. Like, it's one of the core things that I like about the Era D10 rule set. So luck is separate. And then finally, for Era the Empowered light uh there is a power you know you have your your superpower mm-hmm. and uh you'll be able to you know distribute a number of points within those five things and that's what you get that's what you've got that's what you can do and you know let's say you're you know the human torch and you want to flame on and fly okay well that might be uh i think that might be reaction and uh your superpower mm-hmm um, oh, you just want to make the biggest fireball you can. Well, that will that would be double superpower. Um, it's 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 it works in exactly the same way as as the Era D10 rule set. That's that's deliberate. You know, it's sort of a a way of simplifying the stats. Um, combat works the same way because I'm I'm pretty happy with the way combat works. Uh, the exception being that you, you know, you you go based off successes, not successes, and then roll on top of the successes. You go based off successes instead. Um, and and the idea, as I say, is just to take a step back, go right. What is the what is the core of this rule set that makes it a thing? How do I deliver this? And you know, I I believe that you know I've I've done lots of playtests with this. I've had this idea for a long time now. Um, I. I've even finished the artwork for the era, uh, the Empowered Light rulebook. Um, all, all of the artwork's done. It's sitting in a folder. Um, I I hired someone during COVID who will remain nameless, mm-hmm. um, who unfortunately then didn't, you know, to be the line manager of the game, who unfortunately then didn't deliver anything. Um, and, uh, you know, so I've not had time myself, but otherwise it would have appeared by now in its own right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, again, most people play Era the Empowered during the Empowered Department time or during the, uh, what we call Event 3, um, the the sort of Avengers mm-hmm. time. And the idea was to only include those two. You know, yeah. only include those two in Era the Empowered Light. You can either be part of a government department, your superpower police, or you're like the Avengers and, and you sort of have the, the tacit agreement that it's okay, but you're not really like controlled by anyone you're you're just doing your thing yeah the way you describe Um, it yeah i'm very much reminded of the difference between fate accelerated and fate um the main difference between the two of course is that instead instead of a customizable and and large skill list um fate accelerated just has a set of five approaches uh yes um it is somewhat inspired by by Fate Accelerated. Um, I learned... I learned about... You know, I played Fate Accelerated a few times, but I learned more about it than, you know, I ever really expected to uh, when I worked on, first, the Mark for Death project um, with uh, uh, with Sanchit Sharma mm-hmm. and uh, and later the uh, Era Balam Fate Edition. Um, and, you know, I, I understand that people like that kind of rule set. 
Um, I can I can get behind it in certain circumstances. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, you know, let's let's make it let's make it easy. Let's make it very obvious what you can do, and and not have to sit at the table and have someone say what what exactly is esteem. You know, uh, what, what what exactly does that mean? Yes, I like that in general, but uh, you know, giving people the option to not have to do that, I think, is equally important. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to talk a bit about soul about um, soul mist, especially especially since um, I have been looking at the response to the, to the dark to the Dark Souls Five E project that. Um, Steamforged has put out, and some people have had some strong words about that thing. Um, to the point where they had to, where they had to do, an, they had to patch a bunch of stuff out because of some problems that people had had. And of course, I had my own criticisms, but when it comes, but what get, what um, what prompted you? What prompted you to to want to do an air, to want to do era meets Dark Souls with um, Soul Mist? I'm a big gamer, right? Uh, I I I I love playing games. Uh, I particularly play on the PlayStation. Um, mm -hmm. I have well over two hundred platinum trophies. Um, I have played all the Souls games, uh, Demons and Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have played in Platinum Blood, uh, Bloodborne. Uh, when Dark Souls came out on the PS4, I went ahead and got that and, and did it again. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a fan. Um, I I thought to myself, how do I do this? What is it that makes it unique compared to, say, Era Dragon Soul? And to me, the things that make Dark Souls unique from, you know, other fantasy games is the way in which the, the combat runs. It's the way in which the, uh, the, the characters level up. And it's the way in which you're able to use items. Like, like as in, you have to have a certain level of stats to use a, you know... Some strength, some dexterity to use a katana. Tons of strength to use a, a, a giant stone, you know, um, the stone greatsword. Um, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have anything like that in the era estate, as it were. Um, era Soul Mist is not just era Dark Souls. It's got a little bit of other bits and pieces as well. I've I've always felt like the Dungeon Siege series had similarities to Dark Souls. Um, in terms of, you know, using your skill was the way to improve it. I always loved that. Mm -hmm. um, I've thrown a little bit of that in there. Um, I loved the idea of having something where a dodge mechanic or a block mechanic was genuinely vital and important. Um, you know, rather than, oh, hey, yeah, you get defense in, in Era D10. You, you get defense automatically when you're in combat. That's great. Uh, you know, you can put up a shield and get a cover bonus. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But as an active thing that you're rolling out of the way when someone, you know, brings down their meat cleaver on your general location, or, you know, you, you roll behind a, a large stone pillar to avoid an AoE attack or something, it's not something that really, really exists in Era D10, and I wanted. I, I don't. I don't think that it's precluded from existing. It's just not part of like the way the core rules are written. Um, you know, the flexibility is there. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to do something around that, and find like a middle ground between Dark Souls, where. Obviously, exact your exact location relative to the enemy is a thing that is absolutely vital. I I still don't believe that's good for a tabletop role playing game to have specific locations. You are exactly a meter and a half away. You are at thirty degrees from it. I think that's a really bad idea. You no, know, that's that's my opinion. I know there are people out there who like to 
sort of have miniatures and, and have it in exactly the right place. And I have no issue with those people. But I think that, for me, I don't want to run a combat like that because I feel like it reduces flexibility. Mm. So what I was looking to do, and, and I'm reasonably happy with the dodge mechanics. I didn't quite get the block mechanics right based on my last playtest. But the dodge mechanics I'm very happy with. Mm -hmm. I wanted to figure out how to make it an active choice to dodge out of the way or not. How to restrict people based on the armor they're wearing. You know, so their role is slow if they're wearing lots of heavy armor or more, more armor than they can carry. I wanted to look at, you know, uh, can you just stand there and block with a shield and just be completely untouchable? Except for, you know, for, for the most part, that is. And it's 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 something that, that sort of interested me as an alternate approach to the way in which the game is played. And obviously the the the, the world of the the kind of world the the dark empty world mm -hmm. that the Souls games offer you. You know, where where the undead are soulless basically, uh, for lack of a better phrase. Um, you know, that, and, and particularly, uh, I, I know that anyone who's played Dark Souls 1 will know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, that, that run up the parapet uh, in uh, Anor Londo. I wanted, to, I wanted to be able to do that, you know, in a way that would make sense, in a way that would matter for the players. Mm. And, you know, a there was an opportunity and I came up with a, a really cool idea for the story about this soul mist um, which traps your soul if you die within it um, you know and, 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 and you know there's there's plenty of sort of uh, Gwendolyn type entities you know gods which are around who you know make things a certain way um, you know, there's plenty of room for that kind of scope. So, yeah, Era Soul Mist was an opportunity to really have some fun with that subgenre of fantasy, which I don't think is particularly covered by Era Dragon Song. It's it's something different again for those reasons that I've described. Mm -hmm. And given that, given that, um, since you meant you mentioned the whole, th you mentioned a fascination with equipment be equipment being you being um restricted based on based on um core stats and i'm guessing that's something that you're that you'll be dipping into with this oh yeah 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 i, th I think that's really important because um i think you should reward people for building in a certain way and of course with uh with era d10 we already have the uh, concept of a crit threshold from Era Lost Legend. Um, and I think, you know, the idea that a weapon might wound more easily or crit more easily uh, feeds in, to give you an example, into uh, dexterity for critting more easily and uh, strength for wounding more easily. I think I think that it can fit together very nicely. Uh, you know, so, you know, your, your, your greatsword, that's going to hurt someone, but your rapier, that's going to stab someone really where it, where it hurts much. You know, you're much more able to direct it. Mm-hmm. In that's and <coughs> in that same in that same vein, um throughout the throughout the throughout these Souls games, and I I should I should note that I'm put that even though it's technically in that in that same formula, I'm putting Sekiro off off into the corner. Not right. that I don't not, I love Se I love Sekiro to death, but it but it's kind but it's kind of an outlier when it comes to the formula. Yeah. So but there, there's of course, there's of course been the been the primary recovery item, whether it be Estus flasks or blood vials, or or the like. Are you planning on putting an equivalent to that within Soul Mist? Absolutely, uh, and bonfires. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yes, both of those things are are very much part of. Of soul mist, um, you know bonfires where when you rest there you regenerate, but so do all the enemies. Yeah. Um. So you know it's it's like I said and and like I decided really for the first time with Era Lost Legend, 
if you're going to go fully along with a a genre or a subgenre, you're going to have to accept that you get the negatives along with the positives, right? So with Lost Legend, there is there is a tendency to want to go out and just farm loads of low level enemies, right? Because you'll get loads of crystals, you'll level up really quickly. Um, as the GM, you need to be vigilant of this. You need to make sure that it's not that easy. And there are things that you can build in for the GM as a game creator, which help them out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like uh, like in, in Dark Souls, say you kill a Mimic, uh, that won't regenerate. So, you know, you kill a Mimic, you get you get the really cool item, the Mimic doesn't regenerate once once you rest in the bonfire. Um... That's that's fine. That's you know there will be a few things, or or um, I, there are also a few locations where when you finally get to the bonfire, uh, enemies around it don't regenerate. Um, there, there aren't many, but there are a few of those in the original Dark Souls. Um, and for me, I think you know there there are tools that you can give the GM to help them out with that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And. Do you have do you have do you have plans to put in some sort of stamina mechanic? Now that's an interesting question. Um, I'm in two minds about it. Uh, I, I'm I'm going to have to say that I haven't entirely decided yet. Uh, I thought it ran quite nicely without a stamina mechanic uh, because you already have turn based combat anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, however. I can also see a reason to do it. So I, I sort of need to think about it, really. Um, I don't have a firm answer for you yet, is, is the short answer. I can... I can, cer- I can certainly get that. Uh. Uh, obviously, if we fund uh, Era Solmist, then I, I will have to nail my colours to the mast one way or the other, but uh, yes, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's... I um, I a while back I a while back I did a video co- covering our thoughts on the pre on the preview that we were able to get of, um, of Steamforged Dark Dark Souls Five E project, and one thing that that my partner and I were very much against was the fact that they combined health and stamina into a resource they called position, and. I had felt that that um, created more problems than it solved, uh, especially especially since that me having bo- having both your, having both that the me, having both that and your and your health drawing from the same pool is gonna I'm make very, people. Uh, is, very, very sorry, it's just my Discord sometimes disconnects. Apologies. Yeah. No worries. Um. Uh, health and combined health and stamina. Yeah, they combined health and stamina into position, and I had and I had said that if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, you're going to make people play far more conservatively than they probably should. Yep, I can understand that. Um, I I understand the desire for stamina because you don't want someone to just roll, 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 roll. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the way that I've built it, in in uh, in order to roll, you need to roll roll a dice, right? You need to roll some dice. So if you continuously roll, if you continuously swing your sword, eventually you're going to fumble. Mm-hmm. Like you you aren't going to be restricted that far that you're never going to be able to fumble. Then there's bad luck points on top of that. So you know if someone someone's clearly abusing the roll, if you'll excuse the the, the double pun there. You you you've got systems within Era D10 which allow you to fight back as the GM. And move moving moving past that, I do I do want to cover a bit of um of Era Friction. This which is definitely definitely go, definitely sounds like a bit of um. A bit of crazy ass fun, especially with you saying that you always have to walk away from explosions. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's eighties and nineties. I'm I I grew up on eighties and on and nineties action movies. I, uh, I I have always adored them. 
Um, and the idea, the idea behind Era Friction was that you can play as a hero of the ilk of your favorite sort of archetype. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can be Oni, you can walk in with a big gun. Yeah. Um, or you could be, uh, I don't know, you could be Bruce Willis, and pretty much no matter what happens, you can't die. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's your trait. Your trait is you can be beaten up, you can be stabbed, you can be bloodied, you can't die. Like, you can go down to, to no health and fall unconscious, but you still can't die. Um, you know, uh, and, and sort of the idea is that each of these archetypes would have their own trait, their own way of approaching something. You know, uh, um, if you're playing a Jackie Chan-type character, you must use the environment in order to attack your enemy. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to get them to stand in the middle of a stepladder so you can, you can slide on through or whatever, you know. Um... So the, the, the idea behind Era Friction is really, it's supposed to be a bit of a silly time. Um, I, I, I had for a very long time a the concept of um, uh, what I call Mission Implausible, which is sort of, you know, it, like, like it, it would probably be like an Era Hitman expansion book of some sort. And, and over time, it sort of, like, became Era Friction. Like, I just had these ideas that, yeah, okay, you can just be the muscle-bound guy who, who storms in, or, or, you know, you could be uh, Stallone from Demolition Man and just everything blows up around you. You could be Van Damme, and therefore, if you kick someone, they go down. Or, or possibly take drugs, if you believe Universal Soldier. Mm. Um, as I said, it's still kind of a prototype it's not all worked out yeah but uh you know i've, I've got a number of archetypes worked out there um I, i'm curious if you have plans to represent somebody who wanted to go, lean a little bit more into um into john woo's st- style of um action uh yeah so uh yeah absolutely um i'm 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 uh that that therefore there must be doves <laughs> you know, like in order to do anything, there have to be doves flying past. Mm-hmm. You know, this is supposed to be accelerating. You know, these these eighties and nineties action movies to the absurd, and and yeah. they're mostly already pretty absurd. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. So it's not that far out of their way. Yeah. Uh, you know, S- Steven Seagal, you get blown up, but no matter what, you do not have a hair out of place. Yeah. Uh, everyone you know dies, but you don't have a hair out of place. Mm-hmm. But. I think, and that's and um, given given that given that kind of setup, I think it makes sense that you'd have that running on D10 light. Yes, yeah, no, I, exactly as you say. It's you know you you can see that you know you'd have in essence a superpower stat that is your stat. You know, for Bruce Willis, it would be the survivability. For Arnie, it would be I uh, something like I have a big gun. That, that comes out of nowhere, you know, you just suddenly have a big gun that you're holding. Um, you know, and, and so on and so on and so on. And you'd roll that stat for when you wanted to use your archetype ability. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to Era Kumite, um, Kumite. As, so, as, somebody who's a fan, as somebody who's a fan of way too many martial, way too many martial arts movies, inclu- including... Bloodsport, Blood Sport, The Quest... Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah. One thing I'm, one thing that I'm curious about is since you, since ostensibly you'd have people from a bunch of different martial arts backgrounds in this, almost like a fighting game, um, just having a, just having a martial arts skill, I'm not sure if that would cut it. So I'm, cu- uh, I'm curious how you'd handle that. So, um... I, uh, I am fortunate to have a, a real martial arts enthusiast as part of my team. Mm. Uh, Leo Kosh, uh, who has been very involved in all of our audio stuff. He's a, he's a fantastic voice actor. Um, he read uh, our Era Survival audiobook, for example. Um, he's, uh, he's a martial arts enthusiast, and uh, he's gone away. He's done research and, you know, figured out, you know... What the difference between Krav Maga and uh, I don't know uh, Mai Tai would actually you know look like, so that I can then stat that in a certain way. Um, so you you have to choose your fighting style basically as as part of Irokumite, mm-hmm. and um, 
Uh, there are going to be a variety of different skills. Um, one of the things that we've talked about, and again, you know, it's 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 not not everything's entirely decided yet. But one of the things we've talked about is actually having a skill for each limb. So you know, there's a there's a right leg, right arm, uh, uh, left leg, left arm, torso, head, kind of thing. Um, and and you know, depending on what your what your fighting style is, you know, you might have different you know different stats in those. And I'm ge- and I'm guess I'm guessing that I'm guessing that you that, that while it wouldn't it wouldn't be a full on stat block there would be there would be some bits of advice on what on what skills to focus on if somebody wanted to lean more into um, say sambo or yeah if- uh, depending on the martial art that they wanted and you know full disclaimer I am not a martial arts expert. By any by any stretch of the imagination, um, it's absolutely all down to Leo, who's who's gone and done all this research for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, uh, you know, uh, he's sort of described what it is to me and what it is you do. And yeah, basically, the idea is that we'd go, "Hey, you're basically cho- if you choose this martial art style, you have these stats, and this is how you would fight." And we'd devote a page to every martial art style to make sure that it, you know it's very clear what it is that you're getting and what it is that you're going to be able to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the the idea that I can have Outer Mongolia uh, uh, versus the United States um, is, uh, is, is, a, is a very entertaining one. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when it comes to Era Impure, um, you mentioned Inspired by Doom. I... I this might be a bit redundant, but when you say inspired by Doom, are we are we talking the old school early id Doom, or are we talking the are we talking the more recent reboot? I, in terms of the mechanics, I don't see a huge difference. Right, I like I'm I'm gonna say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and given that I'm turning it into a team game anyway. It's it's that's that's a hard question to answer. You know, the, like I I think that I I haven't played Doom Eternal, mm-hmm. but uh, Leo and I did stream Doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, the you know the remake. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I you know I played Doom way back in the day, and uh, I did not I did not perceive a huge difference in the mechanics to me. It was updated. It was, you know, better understood what it was like. You could jump, you know. Um, it was a bit more, bit more three D in places than 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 the, the very old, the very old stuff. But yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't see a huge difference in mechanics. And hopefully, everyone hasn't just switched off their their listening because I'm I'm an uncultured philistine. <laughs> um, oh, uh, but but you know, since I'm already turning it into a team game. The, the, it's inspired by Doom in the sense that you know the idea is that you know there are aliens that have or, or demons rather who have come through a portal on Mars, um, or or some other unnamed planet again yet to be entirely defined, um, and you work as a squad, um, and what's what's fun about this and and uh, you know credit credit to uh, uh, one of our fans who sort of presented me with three quarters of an idea and I had to finish it and, and tweak it and make it work. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I'd say his name, except his name actually escapes me. Uh, that's that's me and names. Um, uh, but he'll be credited in the book, of course. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the idea basically is that depending on when you enter combat, how prepared you are for it, there's different types of initiative. Um, you know, you you have ammo levels, so you're either full, you know, nearly full, half full, or nearly empty. Mm-hmm. And and depending on how well a combat goes, or or you know, if you start combat unexpectedly, you might go down an ammo level, for example. There's a preparedness level that you are, um, and 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 that sort of split across the squad. So what happens is, if you're completely prepared for combat, everyone can discuss where they're going to go relative to each other in combat. If you're, you know, if you're kind, you know, so you can go, okay, well, you go first, and then I'll go second, 
and then we'll let the demon go, and then you go third and blast him, you know, when, when he's run over to me, because I can tank the hit. And you can have that conversation before you actually arrange the initiative. That's allowed. Mm -hmm. um, the neutral stance, of course, is um, uh, you roll initiative. And then the, uh, the, the worst case stance is you have to submit your initiative blind. So you, you just go, I'm going to go third hmm. to the GM. You just hand them a note or, or, or type the message or whatever. I'm going to go third. Um, and, and then, you know, the GM just arranges that out and, and you see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of sort of interesting initiative mechanics in there. Um, making it not overly complicated is what becomes important. And and sort of it's it's based on the idea of how much dominance you have in the in the theatre of battle in that moment. Um and, and and that affects how much ammo you have and are able to collect and you know what, what you use obviously affects that as well. Um so you know it, it adds five minutes at the beginning and end of a combat, maybe, maybe maximum in order to sort of promote this kind of real squad unity, you know, that if, if one of you is suffering, then the whole squad is suffering. Mm -hmm. And the, and, uh, le and the other, th the other thing is when it comes, when it comes to, when it comes to the mechanics in, in there, Obviously, Do obviously Doom is known for some crazy ass weaponry. We've all ma we've all made jokes about the op the opness of the super shotgun, and well, how could I talk? How could I not talk about the BFG? <laughs> but I'm cur I'm curious if that's a tradition that you plan on continuing with something that's Doom inspired in the form of Impure. Absolutely. I I mean maybe not the super shotgun specifically. But uh, but certainly that the idea of the BFG versus the rocket launcher, you know, being a thing, mm. you know, and having different pros and cons, uh, you know, I, I I actually really liked the way they did the BFG in the reboot. Uh, you had three shots. Mm -hmm. That you basically only had three shots. Um, you know, yeah, you could find ammo occasionally, but if you used up all your BFG ammo, you would you were going nowhere fast. And you could be swarmed by demons to such a degree that it didn't matter. So, you know, I'd, I'd be looking at going down that route for, you know, making sure that there's some limit on it. But, but you know, insanely overpowered weapons is, is, is fun, you know? As long as you can't just use them and rely on them. That was my problem with the super shotgun. It, it just got a bit that you were supposed to rely on it all the time. Um... So yeah, that that was that was my that was my only issue with the super shotgun. Yeah, and lastly, I'd like lastly I'd like to talk a bit about um about biopunk, especially since that's a genre of science fiction that I don't see tackled very often. One could I agree. argue one could argue Bioshock, but. There's a whole lot more than than biopunk going on with with um, Bioshock. Um, so I would I would argue Eclipse Phase. Yeah, I can I can certainly see Eclipse Phase. Um, one that I've that I've brought up that I've brought up to people, even though some don't agree with me that it that it fits, is a lot of the work of manga artist Satomu Nihei, um, specifically stuff like Blame. Which is a I'm, fascinating. I'm not piece. personally familiar with his work, but uh, so I can't comment on that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, blame first. They it was made. It was made into a film on Netflix. I don't recommend it, largely because Nihei's work is one that doesn't translate well to animation. He he was an architect before he before he started doing manga and. It definitely shows with the way he designs his environments. Blame is one of my favorite manga to sit down and read in total silence. Just be just because of how of how far it how far it dips into um, sheer atmosphere. 
with some with some manga, I can have some background noise on or, or the like. With Blame, I anytime I read that, I read that in total silence. Interesting. Because because you have a city that you have a city that's about this about the size of the or about. About the size of the orbital circumference of um, of Mars. Oh wow! Lost. Just la layer upon layer to the point where sometimes going between floors takes years. And what I'm cu what I'm curious about is with with something like biopunk is that it are you using this as, as a means to to in, to integrate the idea of cha of changing some changing someone's stat block far more radically than normal. Yes, that that is a big part of it. Um, which body you go into makes a you know it, it makes a difference what your stats are. It won't affect your your intelligence or or your charisma maybe, but it's going to significantly affect your your strength, your stamina, hmm. your dexterity even. Um. So, you know, the, the idea is that you download into into the body of the type that you need that has the various attributes that you need. Um It's 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 got a bit of an eclipse face feel to it, but the world in general is also you know, it's it's very um it biopunk. You know, uh, these almost everything in the world is designed as a life form to do a thing. Mm -hmm. Right? So you know you need an aircon system. You've got a little bug in the corner that spews out spews out cold air, right? They they've designed a life form to do it. Yeah. So rather than having this 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 world where you know it's it's all technology, uh, which obviously is the way Eclipse Phase is, apart from the bodies that are created, people. In era biopunk, at least the the um, the pillars, who are the ones who control other people's bodies, um, they they have their own bodies. They they are able to get up and walk around and live a life of luxury. Um, but sometimes you need someone to go ahead and 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 almost possess the foreman of a working group to make sure that stupid damn menial workers who have no idea what they're doing do the thing that they're meant to do. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, factions formed. Uh, there, there are two main factions in Era Biopunk, if I recall correctly. Um, uh, one controls the water, and one controls most of the building materials, minerals, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's, there's sort of a cold war between the two of them, fought by the pillars possessing... You know, so, so you know, one side will possess... You know, uh, try and possess someone on the other side, or or possess someone that, that then tries to defect over to the other side, um, so that they can get in and sabotage the water supply. Mm -hmm. And then you know that 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 gives the excuse for the full scale war. So it's got this very very kind of um, infiltration feel to it. Mm -hmm. Um, above and beyond the the whole concept of you know uh, I'm you know we're creating the life forms we need to do the things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, I will admit that when you meant when you mentioned a a um, organic thing a organic life form for for most tasks, what immediately came to mind was um, Odd World. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, we came up with the idea of this giant spider thing that is basically a transport. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, it just, it's just huge. You load things onto it, it just, just scuttles along, um, unloads at the other end, turns around, comes back, you know, and it just, that's what it's programmed to do because they have basically hacked all genetic codes is the idea. Mm -hmm. And... With of course, that means they can also make like a body that can spontaneously grow wolverine claws, you know, and just just go, you know, berserk over everyone in the area mm -hmm. if they want to. Yeah. So. And 
I think that I think that within this, there's there's an interesting sp there's an interesting spread of 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 ideas throughout. But with all of that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way back to the temple and enjoy the madness that happens here every week. I, uh, you are more than welcome. I, uh, I, I feel like today I've contributed quite strongly to the madness, especially with, with era friction. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it's, it's, this, this project for me is an opportunity to express those ideas that never quite made it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they were too silly. Maybe I had other things on, like uh, era D10 light, and I just haven't got around to them yet. Um, but I don't feel I feel like most of them are at the point where you could play them and enjoy them even if they're not completely polished and perfect mm -hmm. so you know I don't want to charge you 30 quid for a book I, I want I want to give you you know a, 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 I want to take a fiver off you and you have a go and, and, and play it and, and, and enjoy it and you know comment on it let me know what you think of it and then you know if you don't like it then you don't like it and it's it's not the end of the world you know mm -hmm. And of course, and, and you know, the ones that are popular, obviously, we're going to go ahead and and finish those up and polish them up and and, and try and deliver them. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As Thank I often say much. around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. It helps as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably not. Probably not if you have a cold, but still. <laughs> And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>